Welcome everyone. I'm Sandy of Long and Sand and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Canada. So glad you're here. I have got a really pretty window card that we're going to make. It's going to be a version of this one. And, well this is, by the way, this is the card on my block hop today. There, I just saw something on, the, on there. Um, on a block hop today. But again, I'm making a different one. So this will be so much fun. Now, we're going to do this in an interactive kind of way because I'm going to need your help with some of the colors that I'm using. So, hey Gail, welcome. Hi Jean. Oh, from Delaware, my goodness. Yeah, it's kind of cold here too. What can you do in Ontario, right? Same thing. So anyway, so this is the card. I will give you the measurements on this one. This is the one that's in my blog today but in the meantime let's get started on the card so like I said it's a window card let's leave this one out actually and I'm just going to show you what I think is a really really easy way to do a window card really easy because we don't not trying to make it difficult on you are we no not at all so first thing you would do is you would cut your card stock don't worry about this I'll tell you what that is in a second so I don't usually do my cards this direction, but I thought I'd give it a go. So this is Whisper White, just the regular, and it's five and a half by eight and a half, so a half piece of paper basically, and it's scored at four and a quarter. My layer is also Whisper White, and it's also the regular, and it is the same size as the front of the card, so it's four and a quarter by five and a half. Hi Stacy, welcome. Now you notice I put the window in a different spot because I have to change it up just a little bit. <clears throat> Pardon me. So what I found was the easiest way for me anyway was I took this front piece of paper, not attached here, and just ran it through the um, Stampin' Cut and Boss machine using one of the layering circles, and I got that. Now at this point, there's two ways you can do this. I did it a different way. So, um, what I did is I took the piece of paper, and because they're the exact same size, I just lined them up, then put on a little bit of washi tape, and I would run it through the machine again, and then take the layers apart. So, I have done that already. So, let's get that. So, there's the, there's the card as it stands right now. And from the magic, the magic has already started. I've embossed this already. And this is, it is so pretty. It's the same one I used here. And it's the Ornate Floral 3D embossing folder that made all these beautiful impressions. So this is, never looks like much until you've actually seen the piece of paper. This is from the annual catalog. Hey Janice, hey Valerie. Alrighty, so. After Now, one thing is, you are going to not emboss this first. You do it like, like I showed at the, or just a little bit earlier in the video. And look at how those line up perfectly. Don't glue it. I made that mistake earlier today, <laughs> where I got, woohoo, I'm getting there, and I glued it, and I hadn't put in the window sheet. Oops. Yes, I do things like that too. So, I'm gonna, this is where we'll talk about what colors to use. So I have two. It's really simple. It's just, I wanted you to decide because I was like, eh, not sure. Okay. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Sandy. All right. So we're going to pretend this is glued on, even though it isn't. So here's one choice. And then this would be over here with a sentiment on it. And I already have, now this is from the Dragonfly Garden. Yes, it is. Dragonfly Garden. Um, I use stays on ink and this is vellum. I, it's pretty well like I did, I think I did this in my video last week where I just did them and then set them aside. So we have one more dragonfly and then it'd just be a matter of where I put that. Chances are these three will all touch. So there's your one color combination. And then the other, now remember there's going to be a sentiment on here on a different, it'll be on this paper here. So I'll show you that's going to have a bit of color if I can, we'll see where, it, we'll see which one is the best. Now combination number two 
is very much the same, just the opposite. So it'd be like that and that with this on top. So don't have to decide right now. What we'll do is we'll start putting things together and then we'll decide. So I forget if I said that this is Rococo Rose and a color that I rarely ever use, but, but I started using it today, huh? So there's our, oh, I have two of those. I, got, I went a little crazy cutting things today. Alrighty. So let's put this together. And again, we need to put our window in. So I just randomly cut a piece. It looks like it's about three inches by two and a half, let's say. And I like to stick it to this side and rather put it on there because then I know that I've not gone too far over the edge. So we're going to adhere that. I probably should say adhere. And I just used, it's away from the center so it won't squish in. That takes a couple seconds, it's slippery, so it takes a couple seconds for it to dry. There we go. We'll leave that for a second. Okay, so the window is there, yay! But I can actually put this part on because I promise I won't touch that too much. Whoopsie. Is anyone else? I know there's lots of different kinds of window cards, and after the video, when you check out the blog hop, um, you'll see that each of us did something a little different. Oh, yes, I can explain that. Okay, one moment while well, I'm, I'm just going to glue this. And because this is the exact same, get the glue, size, I like to have it flat against something so that lines up. Okay, so I don't have any vellum here. Nope. Okay, so what I did is I took a piece of vellum, and we have the um, are they about 8 by 10 vellum sheets. And I took the dragonfly and I stamped it. Oh, I don't think I said that. I stamped it in stays on because I didn't want it to, um, oh, my, the other butter or one's upstairs. So I basically just stamped it. Remember, this is a big piece, not this little piece. Stamped it. And then what I forgot to mention too, so this is good that we're doing this, is that there's a punch that cuts this out. So it's a bundle and I don't think, in looking, I don't think, no, I took the punch back upstairs. So punched it. I did not fussy cut that. Did not fussy cut. And then I, I, I actually, okay, like I said, I get a little obsessive. So I did a bunch. This isn't even all of them because there's more upstairs. I did, the, I did, I think I had half a sheet and I just did the whole half sheet and then just cut it out. For this one, I embossed in gold, heat embossed in gold. Uh, onto the vellum and when you're doing vellum heat up your heat tool first let it go let it go let it go and then bring it to the powder and that way it'll go really fast and not warp or burn or do any bad things to your vellum I hope that helps okay so there's the front of the card and there's our little guy so cards are a little bit different already and that's okay so you know what I'm going to do next? I'm going to stamp the sentiment on here and then die cut it. And then you'll be able to, um, then you can help me make that decision. So this time I'm using Memento. Oh, hi, Deb. Hello, hello. All right. Mm, there it is. The stamp I'm using, I have, I was going through my stamps today looking for something small. Itty bitty greetings from the annual catalog. Yeah, so this one is going to be fabulous at any at any age because we all are fabulous, right? It's perfect. I, I thought about Hey Friend, but I have a friend with a birthday coming up, thus it's fabulous at any age. So that is a great stamp set with so many sentiments. Oh, you're welcome, Jean. I hope that explained it. I think I went through it in last week's video. That's why I think I kind of went over that. Okay, so I'm not really pushing. I'm just letting it sit there for a second. Okay, and trying, of course, not to get ink on myself. So that worked out really well. And I love that this is ombre. And I am going to show you that paper. But I have to show you something else first. Look at this little guy. Aww. Uh, 
Um, I can get you the measurements, but I'll tell you right now, I don't have like gigantic hands. It's pretty well the length of my hand and a little wider than my hand. It's so cute. And it's so light. And I know my camera's down a little bit far, so that might not, I don't, I don't know if you can see everything. And I like it. I like to go this direction. So even the plates are cute. So this is the mini Stampin' Cut and Emboss Machine. That is so hard to say. And what's really cool is just like on the big one, that's probably up too close, it shows you which to use. So I'm die cutting, so I need plate number one. And then it says I need two of the two, which are always these clear ones. You can see I was practicing today or playing with it today. So you put a two down, then you put your paper down. We don't have the magnetic base yet because there were issues with the base on the large one. They're not making either available right now. Oh, one thing I did learn is I'm really bad for not lining up my plates. Like I'll put, I'll put it through like this, where, I don't know if you can see that, where it's this far away. I found that this, this one seemed to go better if I actually line them up. So that's what I'm going to do. So I have a one and two twos. And then because it's not magnetic, now that you have a choice, of course, you can always use some washi tape. I think we all still have some washi tape. And then it gets a little harder at this end. Ugh. I can see this is so perfect. Like, I don't know about you, but like, well, we don't have the cottage anymore, my parents' cottage, but I would totally bring that up with me. Doesn't fit the regular size embossing folders, which are this wide, but it does fit the smaller, which is pretty cool. So let's see what we have here. Now we can decide on some colors. Oh, that's really cool. So that is out of this piece of ombre. I'm gonna show you that paper actually. Okay, so one of the celebration items that will be available January 5th is this ombre paper which is so cool. I'm gonna flip it over too. I just, those are fun designs. And I'm trying to remember the colors. Blackberry Bliss, Rococo Rose, and, oh, Bermuda Bay. It has to be. And then go to these. So these are the ombre colors, same colors, same three colors. And there they are on the back. And I chose that one. And then here's the other side here. I think the difference is that you get to see the granny apple green. Oh, granny apple green, that's the other color. Yep, there's four colors. So that's not the whole pack. You get 48 sheets. I just didn't think we were gonna flip through all 48 because that might be a little excessive. And you know what? I think we'll put the inside in. So I cut this piece. This is that ombre paper, the Oso ombre paper, and it might help make the decision on what's gonna go inside. So question. I think I was going to put it this way with the lighter to the darker at the bottom. And this particular piece will be, hmm, I did not write that down, did I? Mm, I'm going to, oh, I know what it is. It's four and an eighth, because this is four and a quarter, four and an eighth by five and three eighths. There you go. Alrighty. So, and we're using the Rococo Rose side. And you know I don't use a ton of glue. There's no reason to do all of that because it's paper. It will stick. Okay, so the ombre to the top. Kind of doing this in uh, probably an opposite way I would make it. You know why I use the Tombow, right? Everybody knows you have wiggle time and that's what we like. Okay, so this, here we go, finally. Okay, you're on. There's a spot in there. I don't like it there. Okay, so here's the choice. Like this. Actually, I guess we have more than this. these choices because you might choose white with white. Okay, so here we go. White with white. This is a white. We'll call this the, let's just call it white with white. White with white with the ombre. And I'm not sticking anything down yet, so it's going to float around a bit. And then the butter, or the, it's not a butterfly. And then this guy. Or white with the Rococo Rose, like so. Or <laughs> Rococo Rose with Rococo Rose. And I have to tell you, oh, I shouldn't. 
That's my least favorite. It's, it's just too pink. So if we brought this down to two choices, it would be the Rococo Rose with the white or the white with the white. Now I know there's a delay. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna clean up some of the dyes. I should tell you what I used. So for this one, I used one of the stitched shapes dyes. Oh, okay, there's a vote for the Rococo Rose with the white by the looks of things. And then for these, I use the layering circles. Does anyone not have the layering circles? I think these are the first the first dies I bought. So for the, and I can't tell you what sizes these are, but I didn't want it too big because you figure someone's gonna write in this card. So you don't really want it to be massive and too small and it's just like not much. So I guess I know what we'll do is we'll talk about how I made this. So the first thing you do is you line up your dies and you want one that's slightly bigger than your circle with the scallops. First one you do is just run that through your die cutting machine. Then you're gonna end up with a, with a sh round shape. Next, we have to pretend it's there. Oh, you know what, let's not pretend. Let's do it, I will show you. <laughs> let's not pretend while we're deciding, I think that's Two votes for the mm, Rococo Rose with the white. I should put that back or I'm gonna forget. I have like terrible memory, but you already knew that. Okay, let's bring that back. I will show you how I do this. Plate number one, and this is Rococo Rose. So the first thing you do, not this one, this is smaller. Take the size you need, not like that. And you put a plate between, or you will like mess up your bottom plate. Not sure if that shows, hopefully. I'm not gonna to be too fussy about where it sits on the plate. And yes, I'm gonna put them through awkwardly and see if that causes difficulties. No, it's working. Now I did read, there, it comes with a little instruction book. And um, in the past, like with the old big shot, I would put two pieces of cardstock through with a die. Um, I would put, and I, I, this one says like, don't do that. All right, so. There's my scallop circle. So we keep that and then bring the size of the window back and plate one and two go on the bottom again. Now, again, there's no magnets here. So I'm just gonna kind of hold it, hopefully, hopefully hold it right there. Hope for the best. Okay, oh dear. There we go. The good news is this is this opening here is a little wider than the plate. So if you are a little crooked, you're okay. So light, so light, sturdy and light. That's what I like. Okay. So first thing we did was use this one. Second one, we took out the center and there you go. Voila. Just in case you didn't know how to do that, but I think you do. I think you do. We're pretty seasoned, aren't we? Okay, so it looks like we're going with this. I'm just gonna read that. Yep, we're going with this one. Okay, so now we glue. The easy part. Well, I say that then, you know, and then you know what happens. Again, I don't wanna put on so much glue that it gushes out, because then you have cleanup to do. And that's kind of like, no, don't wanna do that. Alrighty. If you have the fine tip glue pen, you can use that. Alrighty. Looks pretty lined up. Oh, actually I have to hold it up. Yep, that's lined up. From this angle, I can see the white and that's not what we wanted. This I'm going to pop up and this I'm going to pop up because we can, right? Dimensionals. Oh, I put them where they're supposed to be. <laughs> Go figure. All right, don't let me forget. I'm gonna give you the sizes for this card because inside it's different than this card. And that wouldn't be good. So put this one on first and then we'll adhere everything. Anyone getting tired of the uh, dragonflies yet? I'm not, I'm not. And I decided not to heat emboss this one because I didn't wanna add introduce another color to it, if that makes sense. 
Just keeping it nice and simple. So this is not a difficult card. You know me. I don't make cards that you can't make. There we go. Don't need that one. We just put them back. And I do have my take your pick tool here, but I'm just going to use my fingernail tonight. Alrighty. So about there, um, one of the rules is that you have your, to keep the continuity, you, you have your pieces touch each other, which is why this is going to, over, going to overlap just a little, as is this, just a little bit. So it'll touch all three pieces. Let's get that lined up nice and straight. And we need a glue dot. Now, let's see. How am I going to do that? Because I don't want you to see the glue dot. Hmm. Well, we'll try it and see what happens. For my other cards, I was putting the glue dot right here. But if I do that, you'll be able to see the glue dot on the other side. And I don't want that. So. And now I do want my take your pick tool. Alrighty. So get that. I just want to see if you can see it. Not, not really very well. If I put it over on the wing, I wonder. Let's find out what's the worst thing that will happen, right? It sticks to your finger. Alrighty. Try to remember where I put it. Oh, there it is. I feel it. I may want to put another glue dot under there. I think I do. I like I like movement on my cards. However, I think if I was to get under that wing, there we go. Now we're cooking. And here's the inside of the card. Now, I don't have a birthday sentiment yet because I'm not sure what I'm going to put in the card. So that's that card. But I was, oh no it isn't. I wrote down in big letters, rhinestones. Love the dragon. I, you know what, Julie, I'm addicted to these. That would explain all of these. Well, there's actually um, eight of them, I think, in total. Um, but yeah, I'm not forgetting ribbons. I'm not putting any on. We're using rhinestones tonight. So grab, and not a, not a whole bunch. You notice with this one, I use the gold glimmer. Glimmer or glitter dots? I can never remember. Um, just something nice and light, light and airy, you know, light and airy. So, and again, I think I say this every time I use these. I don't know if this is what they still look like. These are, I've had these for years. They are from Stampin' Up, of course. I only use Stampin' Up products. Only, 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 only. Well, and I do... <laughs> the backing came off that one. All right, get your take your pick tool out. This does have a different end on it, by the way, which I do often pull out. All right, so let's see if we can do it in such a way that we don't. And I always find less is more, so we're not going to like super overdo it. We may go to some different, that's the same size, go, go to some different sizes just for variety. Now, this doesn't offer you a lot of places to put something larger. So if you find a large enough spot, go for it. Go for it. Let me make this one a lot like that one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like this, like that. So they're the same card. It's the same card, but it's different, as you can see. Oh, enjoy your dinner, Valerie. I'm bad for not having dinner till after my videos. And I know I know it's 8 o'clock, 8.25 here. I think I'll stop. You know, sometimes it's more or less. It all depends on where your focal, 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 focus, focal point is. Got it. Huh. All right. So I was giving you the, the dimensions. So we already know what we used for this because we talked about that. We know about this and those. So for the inside, yes, I put another one, which is kind of cool if you're having to be holding it up, which you can't see from your angle, but you can actually see the other dragonfly. So this piece, oh, this is the Dandy Garden DSP, which you will find in the mini catalog, which if you've asked for one, it's on its way. 
Alrighty. Okay, so this is four and an eighth by five and three eighths, the darker of the dandy garden. And this is, what color is that? Bumblebee, bumblebee. And then the smaller piece is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And you can write on this. So that was my plan with this one as well, that you can write, write over the whole thing. You can see it. And guess what, my friends? Those are my cards. Um, I do have an ordering special um, till December 31st. If, you, if your order is a minimum of $50 bracket before tax and shipping, close bracket, um, you will get a free package, um, not this one, of course, a free package of the Rhinestone Basic Jewels from me as a gift. One other thing, um, oh, I think it was around the 7th of December, I had three $7 coupons. Um, I still have one, so you're hearing it here first. I will put out a newsletter to say that I have one more of those left. So if you would like to place an order, um, it would have to be $40 or more to use the, the coupon. Um, the $50 or more will get you the rhinestones and the coupon, but remember that coupon brings it down, so you still have to keep it at 50. And that's the special. Ooh, that was confusing, wasn't it? You might have to listen to the replay. My important links will be in the description after the video. And if you are free this Friday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is the last stamp, craft, and chit chat of 2020. Let this year be over with. So if you are so inclined, um, there's an event on Lolly and Sand and go there and um, click that you're going. The link is there. Okay. I will see you, my friends, um, hopefully Friday. And if not, I will see you next Tuesday again, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining me.